Hey guys, it's Rainy Nights. Today I'm going to show you how to do your blood veld task. So should you do this task? Well, that's personal preference really, which most of the tasks are, but this one in particular. Uh, this one you should do if you want dark totem pieces and you want superior variants, uh, because both of those are going to be more common than other monsters. And uh, yeah, they also have a very high health pool, but low defense, meaning good Slayer XP for you, but uh, the GP, not that great, and um, yeah, it also is kind of an inconvenient monster to fight just because it does magical based melee damage, which is going to force me to switch my setup today, so that's another reason why it's kind of, I don't like it, but it's okay. It, it's still worth doing, I think. It's not an amazing task, but it's decent. So for our gear setup is a pretty unique gear setup this time because I'm absolutely all about that offense 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 but not this time this time i am whipping out the prayer gear which is gear i rarely use but it is going to be uh best for this particular task i think so the prayer gear is the bone crusher necklace which is very important the ring of the god's eye also very important and uh the less important ones are the devout boots the proselyte and uh, the Blessing, of course. And then our regular melee gear is going to be the Slayer Helmet, the Ferocious Gloves, because, I mean, the Holy Wraps do exist, but the Ferocious Gloves is like an insane strength bonus, so I just couldn't give it up. Uh, the Avernic Defender, just a really a similar story, just very good bonuses for offense. Didn't want to give it up. Uh, Fire Cape, because Fire Cape is better than the you know, the various God Cloaks. If you didn't, If you didn't know, there's actually like not only is there god capes, but there's actually god cloaks. Those are two different items. And the cloak is just not worth it. Uh, fire cape is better for the other bonuses. And uh, the Grazi Rapier as well. We are bringing this. This is going to be the best in slot slayer weapon for um, monsters that have low defense. Because the Grazi Rapier just rips and tears through low defense monsters. And it, has, uh, it attacks two ticks faster than the Fang does. So while Fang is the best single best weapon in the game, uh, it's only it's only best on like bosses and PBM end game PBM content. The Grazi Rapier is best for most Slayer content, so you'll be seeing me use this weapon a lot more. And normally I would not recommend buying this weapon, but you know uh, it's actually dropped in price a lot. This thing has dropped to fifty mil. You could buy this for a little under fifty mil if you wanted to. So it's actually like at an all time low price wise. But for the record, yes, if you're a new player, you're probably better off just using Abyssal Whip. But this weapon is better than the Abyssal Whip, for the record. So the inventory is going to be the Abyssal Dagger P++. This is just my spec weapon of choice. We don't want to bring the Sayer Dome and God Sword this time because we don't need it. Uh, we have prayer gear, so we don't need to restore prayer with that spec. And uh, we also won't be losing any health except for when we divine ourselves. So we also don't need to be doing that. So yeah. Uh, we have the Dust Staff just to bring me there. That's along with a lot of ruins. This is for me to get to my house. We have one Blood Ruin uh, placeholder. This actually reminds me I wanted to get one coin uh, placeholder as well. So we're going to have one coin placeholder and one Blood Ruin placeholder. Uh, this is just because we're going to be picking picking up coins probably. They don't drop so frequently that you want a Ring of Wealth. It is not. I do not recommend using a Ring of Wealth. But occasionally we'll get coin drops and we will pick them up because we're going to be high alkene items pretty frequently anyway. So we might as well have coins there. And since we're killing blood velds, yes, they drop blood runes a lot. So we might as well have a placeholder for that too. And then we have three divine super attacks and three divine super strengths. The divine super strengths and the attacks. So if you take two of these potions, these two potions right here are cheaper than a single divine super combat. And we don't need defense for today's task. Uh, and it's actually significantly cheaper than Divine Super Combat. So, yeah, also that one mil won't regret it person, that's a bot, by the way. Don't take pity on them. So, yeah. Uh, also, I should mention that uh, attack. So the accuracy that you gain from the attack stat will apply even to low-ish defense monsters. I probably wouldn't bring it to, like, a zero defense monster, but, like, Blood Velds don't have zero defense. But... Even if they did have zero defense, if you didn't know, attack continues to uh, work even if they have zero defense because it just continues to boost your accuracy. Uh, yeah, so 
let's go ahead and get to our task for today. Just use your Xerix Talisman. Get yourself to the Catacombs of Karend. You could also use a cannon in Mire Ditch if you want, but nah, not for me. You don't want to do that. I just made a cannon guide today for a different task, but I don't want to do cannon for this task. Uh, there's also versions of these in the Irith Dungeon, so if you want to get um, Crystal Shards, you could do that, but I also do not, do not recommend that. What's special about the Catacombs of Karend is there's actually a better version of them here. These are called Mutated Blood Belts. Obviously, they still count for your task, and uh, yeah, these have better drop tables, a little bit more GP per hour, and most importantly, they have Superior Variant and uh, Dark Totem pieces. I'm pretty sure the, the regular ones have superior as well, but these are more common. All right, well, we don't really need our own world, so I'll just hop one more time. If not, we'll just have to share. Okay, whatever, we're just gonna use it here. Female with benefits. What a weird ass name. That's even weirder than my name. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start by using our spec weapon. We're going to have make sure auto retaliates on. We're going to have divine super attack, divine super strength, and then we're going to use both piety and protect from melee. And we're going to start by specking. We miss, spec this thing. We hit, spec this thing. And we're specking them all. So what we've just done is we've attempted to poison them all. So now I'm going to start killing this one regularly. And if I was lucky enough, the other ones will start dying of poison. Not a big deal, but you know, with these Slayer guides, I'm trying to be like a little bit more optimal than my average RuneScape video. So that's what I would recommend doing is uh, what I just did there. So otherwise, I mean, we do have to, it's not really gonna work out because we're sharing the room with this person, but in general, that's what I would recommend. So the Grazi Rapier is just gonna tear through them now at this point. But okay, so I do have to share the room with them. There's a poison tick. So what you want to do, though, is you want to have as many on you as possible because this is an AFK task. This is a task that you should not be, like, you know, paying attention to. We have a prayer bonus of 42 right now. So both with Protect Melee and Piety on, I have at least 2 minutes and 30 seconds of AFK time before I even have to drink a single prayer potion. But, uh, yeah. So as for the loot, it's most likely just going to be a bunch of random... High Alks, they're not the greatest High Alks things. So there's there's an example of a coin drop. There's a 3,000 coin drop. There's a 350. Man, the, the rapier is killing them so fast. It's honestly insane. Like, that was, that was insanely fast. Um, the meat pie, I didn't bring any food because they will occasionally drop food for you to eat anyway, and we're never going to lose health. But I can I can eat that for 12 health, which will help with the divine effects, and you will get food drops from these blood belts, so there's no need to bring your own. But yeah, we cannot take damage right now. So that is the main lesson, lesson of this video, is that if you have both Piety and Protect from Melee on, you cannot take damage. I don't know for sure, but if I took Piety off, there's a chance I might take damage through my prayer. Because they're dealing magical-based uh, melee, and I don't have any like ma magic defense. So there is a chance that if I took Piety off right now, I could actually take damage. But that's why I'm recommending you don't do that. With Piety on, you are going to be immune, and you will never take damage. So yeah, we got a Blood Rune drop. I want to at least show one High Alk, so hopefully we get at least one High, high, alk, high alk item. But yeah, so we have to share the area, which makes this a little less uh, ideal, but it's okay. The thing is, um, a, a, a rule tip, this guy's level 93, so he can't out DPS me. So basically, he's at my liberty right now. If I wanted to steal his kills, I very easily could, so... I'm not going to, but what I mean by that is like he can't try and he can't really screw me up even if he wanted to, because uh, because I'm just going to deal more damage than him. There's a Mithra full helm, so you can see right there the H A value says H58. So any item that has a, an H A value of like more than 300 or whatever the nature ruin cost is for you. I mean it's a bit high, but just in general I'm usually like 300. Uh, you want to go pick it up. And uh, then you will, and there's another one. So while you're in combat, you just equip those two things. You'll continue to deal damage with your little staff right there. And you just go boom and boom. I have to do it again. There we go. 
and then you carry on with your task. So I oh I just took one damage, didn't I? I just took one damage, I think. That's uh, that's interesting. Also, what's that cow doing? I don't know why that cow's there. Okay, I'm taking. Oh, it's because I'm out of prayer. It's uh, it's because I'm out of prayer. <laughs> so yeah, it's been two minutes and thirty seconds. That's why I was taking damage. Uh, so yeah, let's actually take piety off. Let's just see if we take damage without piety. I'm not sure. If you're a lower level, like if your defense and magic's lower, you will take damage even with protect from melee on. And if you want to prevent that, you could always switch out the proselytes for some dehyde body and dehyde chaps if you're taking damage. So yeah, it is a customizable task. You can kind of do it however you want, but this is how I prefer to do it. Since it's such a low defense enemy, I'd rather just have as much prayer bonus as humanly possible so that I can have spend more time AFKing and chilling. So yeah, that's how you do the Bloodveld task. Last thing I'll mention is if the superior variant spawns, do not panic. It is one of the easiest uh, superiors in the game. It's literally just a regular blood belt, no special mechanics to it at all. So just continue doing what you're doing, left click it as normal, and it will die. So yeah, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time. So just showing you right now, the other guy left, so I just go around the room, collect them all, and then I can go watch, walk away from my computer if I want, clean my room, get a drink of water. I can do whatever I want because my character is going to automatically attack them all. So thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time.